Welcome, Anthony Murphy, to the show from Substack Bucks on Deck. This is your segment, Starbucks on Deck. Let's talk about the minor leagues. What's up, Anthony? What's going on? Yeah, they're uh, great morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, so let's uh, let, let's hop into things here. I know we want to we want to kind of we want to pick out you know two two standout hitters from the week, two standout pitchers for the week. Uh, we also had some injury news too that I'd like to just yeah. touch on. Um, mm-hmm. But but yeah, let's talk about uh, let's talk about these hitters. What we see this week. So I mean, I guess I guess we'll start off with the um, <clears throat> one name that I think everyone will be happy to hear had a, a better week, but. Uh, Jamar Johnson actually went on a little bit of a tear over the weekend. Um, I think he picked up three hits on Sunday, including his second home run of the season. He had seven hits total on the week, three doubles, a home run, five walks, only four strikeouts. So looks like maybe starting to put things together. Um, still ways to go with it. I don't think he was ever – I don't think there's ever a point to where, like, I was – incredibly concerned about him because like it, a lot of the stuff was like, he's not, cha- he's, he's doing a lot of the little stuff, right. You know, he doesn't chase bad pitches. Um, so a lot of the stuff was like in zone contact issues and, and, and stuff like that. So like, I don't think I was ever too concerned about him. Like, obviously you don't want to see your, the fourth overall pick from a couple of years ago, struggle the way, you know, put up the numbers that he's put up, but mm-hmm. um I, I kind of like always thought like it was just a matter of time before he started stringing some hits together because he's doing a lot of the right things. The ball just isn't like landing right for him, kind of thing. Yeah, and you mentioned you know he, he doesn't chase pitches right. The walk rate is still incredible. Uh, it's over twenty one percent. I I guess the encouraging thing here is yeah the strikeout rate is down because that was mm-hmm. that was something where you know if there was something you could pick on Termar Johnson for. It was that strikeout rate just being too high, and it's it's still probably higher than you want to see someone. But you know, for someone who's he, he's not even twenty years old yet, he's in high A. That strikeout rate is the lowest it's been in his entire career. It's now at twenty two percent. He had a really good week with that too. He struck out one time in the last five games. So yeah. that is yeah, that's that's pretty encouraging. Batting average still below two hundred. You want to see? You definitely want to see that creep up quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I guess good signs from Tramar, huh? Yeah. And, and you know, like, like you, you obviously want to see results and you definitely want to see results from, from a former first round pick. But when, when you're 18, 19, 20 years old and you're still in like the lower levels, you just want to see like signs of doing like the right things that, that will get you to, to the results. And, and he's, he's shown the, the right things and all that stuff. And so it's probably only a matter of time before he had like a week like this and, like now the question is like, I mean, you know, I always talk about like consistency with, with like the minor league players. So like now it's nice to have that week now, but now you got to build on it and, and continue to, to do, do it on a week to week basis kind of thing. So. Awesome. Awesome. What's well, encouraging. Yeah. Um, so another name that I know a lot of pilot fans like popped up, he had that really good year in the, the Dominican league. He didn't, play so great last year in, in the complex league, but uh, the, the Marauders had some catcher injury issues this past week. Uh, Garrett Forster was already out with an injury. Um, Justin Nickness went down with an injury. So they're down to one catcher. So they had to pull someone from the complex league and they, uh, they brought Axel Plaz up and only played three games, but he, um, I think right now, like in small sample size right now, obviously, but he's averaging like 105 miles an hour with the like exit velocity right now. Like he's absolutely like smoking the ball. Like his first batted ball in play was like 112 miles an hour on um, there. And, and he wow. has two home runs, uh, four RBIs. He had three hits in three games. Um, and he's just, it's just his, he has, so like I read a report on him before, like I had seen him, and they're worried about like his like his frame not being very projectable at like the next level. Like they don't know how much like power and, and like strength he can grow. But like I sat next to him at a, a Bradenton Marauders game, and like it not a big frame, but he is like built very 
they're, and you can see it in like the exit velocity numbers are already here. He already had a couple in like the complex league that were 110 plus, And now he's had like two or three at 110 plus in, in Bradenton. So like, I mean, maybe, maybe the frame isn't great, but he's already smoking the ball at, at 18, 19 years old. So pretty, Didn't his it, first it, home it run go 440, by the way, what's that? Did his first home run go 440, by the way? I think that was the second one on there, but okay. yeah, yeah, he he is like just the ball explodes off the bat, like whether it's a ground out with it or or he puts it out of the park, like it, if he makes contact with it, it 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 gets hit very hard. And it was just so impressive to see. I'll say this: you so you mentioned 112 mile an hour exit velocity there, and and I don't want to gloss over that because. Yeah. I, I want to make sure people understand just how hard that is, <laughs> especially for an 18 year old kid. Um, Jared Triolo's hardest hit baseball at the major league level is 108.1. Uh, <laughs> Key Brian Hayes has not hit a ball over 110.4 this year. And, and Key Brian Hayes is somebody obviously who's known for hitting the ball pretty hard. Uh, that 112 number, that's, I guess just put that in, I'm trying to put that in context just for everybody where that's not a number that you typically see from an 18 year old, is it? Yeah, no, it's not. And, and like, it's a small sample size, but like, I don't think you can have, you know, there's a lot of questions that I had about, about him and stuff like that, you know, cause the Dominican numbers, those are, those can be very misleading. If, if you're a very physically mature kind of kid or, you know, player down there in the Dominican, you're going to, you're going to dominate down, down there and like kind of seeing him when I was down in Florida, like, okay, well, he's got that kind of frame and mature body. That makes sense. And, and like, then you got to question whether that's going to translate over kind of, kind of thing. And I mean, at least, at least from what I saw there, like he just, even like the two games that I saw of him in the complex league, he, I, I think he had a hit, but like everything was just smoked. Like he just, he makes such great contact in there and it was it's just been impressive yeah yeah it's definitely on my uh my radar mm -hmm. after this week yeah yeah definitely someone to watch i don't so i don't know how long like the uh, uh justin mcness and gareth forster they're gonna be out. i know forster was out all week last week he he went on like the injured list like the middle of my my trip the uh the previous week so I don't know how long they're going to be out. Um, I, I do like that they got him like immediately involved. Like I, 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 I kind of, in my head, I kind of figured that like, well, I mean, they already have Omar Alfonso and, you know, they're really high on him. So like, there's, I, I thought there's a chance that he would just catch the rest of the weekend, but like uh, Plaz caught like two of the three days that two of the three games that he played. So it, like, it was nice to see him get like involved immediately. So. Yeah. But very, very good signs. I know. Um, we had a we had an episode over the off season and and, and you know I just kind of picked Axial Plaz as like a the the default whipping boy for someone who killed it in the DSL and then came over and and struggled in the complex league. So yeah, it, it he's still young enough, obviously yeah. that you know there's mm -hmm. there's time there. He's he's only 18 years old. Uh, so yeah, very encouraging signs. That's that's. that's that's a hard hit ball. You can't just gloss over the fact that, that yeah. an 18 year old hit the ball that hard. Like that's not something that they do. And he's consistently been doing. He's, he's had multiple, multiple bad balls of 110 plus already in, yeah. in, in, in three games. That's yeah. That's, like, like he, said, that's he, like, he had like a ground normal. out that went hundred. I think, I think his the hardest hit ball he had over the weekend was a ground, just a ground out. Too. Yeah. So. That's he's fourth on the team at home runs. <laughs> that, that's impressive. They, like, again, like that's not something you see out of that level. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, I guess let's shift gears. Let's go pitching. Um, top two pitchers from the week that we want to we want to touch on. Um, probably, probably both of them are going to come out of out of Altoona, which the the Altoona rotation kind of struggled a bit. There, there are a couple names that are still kind of struggling, but the last couple of weeks they've they've started. To, you know, the names that you kind of want to see get going have gotten going. Braxton Ashcraft had a a really good week last week. He had the the seven inning, seven shutout innings with ten strikeouts on Tuesday, and you know, like when they do the Tuesday Sunday thing, you know, they don't always push push them too deep into 
like too high of a pitch count on Sunday. So he only threw 50 pitches on, on, uh, on Sunday, but it was a total of 10 innings, only one earned run and 14 strikeouts he had over the week. And the, the strikeouts are starting to come um, pinpoint control. I think he, he, he has like three or four walks or something like that all season or something like, like the walk, the walk rate is like incredibly low on there, but he had five walks, five walks. Five, so yeah. I, um, Oh no. Yeah. So for the month, for this month, his ERA is only two fourteen, and he has three walks and twenty one innings. So like, he's al- he's always has that control. It's just a matter of how the stuff was going to play deeper into games because you know coming back from Tommy John last year, they uh, he didn't pitch more than four innings at all in, in a game. So now they're starting to work him a little bit deeper. the The game on Sunday broke like a streak of like four or five games where he completed at least five innings each time out so like he's pitching deep he's now he's starting to learn how to pitch deeper how to get the outs to to and then the stuff is translating a little bit more so he, he's a guy that's definitely heading like in 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 the right direction for it you mentioned how they they were like very cautious with him last year and and this was mm-hmm. like the one thing i was looking to see from him this year was like yeah. Hey, let's let's actually become a starting pitcher, right? Because yeah. he was starting games, but like you said, like he was going he was going three innings for the most part, like every time out last year. They were being very cautious with him mm-hmm. uh, after that Tommy John surgery. So, yeah, that I guess that's the first thing that jumps out to me because everything else kind of kind of staying the same. Like he's still striking people out. The the control mm-hmm. the, is is absolutely there, um, and and yeah, you're seeing like seven innings out of Braxton Ashcraft. Uh, that's not something that we're used to seeing, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so, definitely, definitely encouraging. I, I know you don't like to speculate on on promotions and such, right? Um, but Bra- I mean, he's 24 years old. He's he's on mm-hmm. the 40 man roster, and Indianapolis's pitching staff has been either plucked or. Uh, they're they're no longer in the organization due to due to contract opt outs with Eric Lauer like that that rotation is kind of just pieced together with some bodies at this point. Yeah. Um, is Ashcraft someone? I mean, obviously he's repeating Double A because he only pitched twenty innings there last year. Is he kind of on the brink? You think of a of a promotion to Triple A? Yeah, I think I think I think one of the last things you probably want to see from anyone making the jump from double to triple A would be, you know, consistent, consistently pitching deeper in games and stuff and stuff like that. And like outside of Sunday, which for obvious reasons, they, they kind of limit the pitch count on there. Um, so yeah, he, he's a guy, you know, right now Altina has six, maybe seven guys that you can argue that you want to see in the rotation right, right now. Um, they, they have like Solomito coming, they had him come out of the bullpen, over the weekend to, you know, he's still working on some, on some stuff and everything like that. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, there it's, it's pretty jammed up. Right? I mean, even it's like trickling down to Greensboro right now, because you can make a case that Greensboro has like six or seven guys. You kind of want to see like stretched out uh, in starting situations. So the only, the only organization or the only uh, level that really doesn't have that right now is triple A. So I, I think there are a couple guys on Altoona that you can make a case to, to slide up. Um, I think they're going to want to probably see how the Bubba Chandler thing goes and get Solomito, whatever he's working on, worked on and stuff like that. And then I, I can probably see a scenario where they start bumping a couple guys up. I, I don't think there's going to be too big of a, a push to start pushing guys up until like maybe the complex league is over. And then mm-hmm. you can take uh, a lot of those arms from the complex league and start sliding them up and stuff like that. Um, I, I think we'll probably see like we could probably see like our first big shuffle around then, which would be like late July, I think it is, when the complex leaks over, and and then and then kind of go from there. Yeah, um, I know triple. Like I said last week, just in particular, I mean, you had Skeens getting called up, mm-hmm. uh, but Priests are going back down. Eric Lauer being op, you know opting out of his contract, but uh, Domingo Herman did join Indianapolis yeah. this this weekend as well. So there's there's a few arms there, but definitely the one the one level that's just kind of missing missing a complete intact rotation. I feel like yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so so very good outings from uh, Braxton Ashcraft. Um, who else we got on the mound? The, the other guy, he um, he threw. Uh, he just made just back up with with Altuna through four innings, perfect innings. Didn't allow a hit or walk. Hasn't allowed a hit so far since he's been out there. Uh, Thomas Harrington was four four innings. Uh, what is it? He has nine strikeouts and only one walk in seven innings with Altoona so far this year. Um, was, there's a tweet, Nola pointing out a tweet to me that where he they said he's averaging like 94 and a half on the fastball right now. Um, so that's a, I feel like that's like a maybe like a tick up from where he was at last year. Um, it just I mean Harrington's a guy that that I've been really high on going into it. I, I thought he had a little more upside than um, than what. People were originally talking about with it. You know, he was a top hundred prospect with the, on ESPN on ESPN's rankings. Just the the fastball is, you know, the Pirates like the the guys that the have the fastball that plays up in the zone with the metrics and and whatnot. And yeah, what Alex Stump had that article to where like Harrington kind of went over his fastball grip with Jared Jones, and that kind of let Jared Jones fastball explode. So. He's a fastball slider guy mainly. The fastball has been playing really good up in the zone. Helps put the slider down and um, just just look stepped in and look has looked really good so far. Really impressive and and can't still still stretching him out a bit on there. Just coming back from the injury, no need to really rush him. Like I said, they have they have multiple arms that can that they want to go extra or you know multiple innings and stuff like that. So. It, it's easy to kind of work them in. So, but good start from him so far. Yeah, so far, so good. Seven hitless innings there in Altoona. Mm-hmm. Um, you mentioned Alex's article, and I, 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 just in case you haven't, if you're listening or watching, go and find this article. It's kind of, it's, it's super interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, you know, we, cause we keep talking about how Jared Jones's fastball is just so much more electric this year than it was yeah. last year. Right. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Jared Jones is basically throwing a Thomas Harrington fastball is, is what he's doing. He's like, you know what? I'm throwing what you're throwing. And mm-hmm. he started, he, you know, him and him and Harrington got together over video games over, you know, this off season, they got, they got together in off season workouts and, and Harrington showed him, you know, his pitch grip showed him how he threw his fastball. And Jared Jones was like, I'm going to try this. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, he liked what he saw yeah. <laughs> and obviously yeah. so do all of us. Uh, so, mm-hmm. If um, Harrington obviously doesn't have the explosion that Jones has, right? It's not that 97, 98 miles an hour, but it's it's the same, it's the same pitch basically, right? Pa- same pitch shape, and that's that's what has made Jerry Jones's fastball so elite. The velocity is great, but just like the the, it, the rise on it, right? Um, it, it's it's an elite pitch. So, yeah, if that's what we have to look forward to with Thomas Harrington, maybe just a, a couple ticks less. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm excited. I mean, it for works that. for Joe Ryan in Minnesota right now. Like Joe, Joe Ryan. Joe Ryan's a guy that like I. I feel like a lot of the Pirates in like the lower levels and stuff like that. I don't say like personally model their game after, but maybe it's something that the Pirates like look at. Like maybe maybe they don't have the velocity, but if you're getting lots of life in the zone with it, like or, and you know they're big extension guys, you know, which is why they're really big on Bailey Falter. So like maybe they're not throwing 98, 99 like Jared, Jared Jones does, but if there's a lot of life on it and it's coming at you a lot quicker or or there's less time to get to the because of the extension, then it plays just just as well sometimes with it. Good stuff. So Thomas Harrington is gonna be the Pirates Joe Ryan, is what you're saying. That's exactly what he's gonna I mean, say. I'm, I don't, I don't remember saying that, but sure. <laughs> editing, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Uh, and like you said, I mean, look at this Altoona rotation of Ashcraft and Chandler and Sean Sullivan and Chen and Salamedo and Harrington. It's just like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of intrigue, and that's just Altoona. Like, we haven't gotten down mm-hmm. to. Greensboro to talk about those names. Like you mentioned, there's a lot of names on that, that team that's, you know, going to be recognized this year, probably. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, just so intriguing. Uh, like you said, like Altoona's, they haven't been putting up like the results more or less, um, but certainly some intriguing guys and names. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about the, 
the elephant in the room maybe a little bit the the guy that landed on the the seven day il uh just anything from that but yeah bubba chandler you hear forearm i'm nervous <laughs> yeah yeah and like there, there's obviously been something like obviously I, you know whether they said that they're not overly concerned with it and they expect expect him back and and, and whatnot but like there's been obviously something off ish with with at least with his control and stuff like that like i mean he like that's that's kind of been his thing since he since he's gone pro right and like you know control will waver here and there but like this has been like two outings now in like his last like five that like walks pretty much cost him from like regardless if he left the game when he did uh his last time out like he he probably had like one batter left before they're gonna pull him in so, which I actually, I was actually surprised that they let him face that hitter that they end up, end up like coming out and checking him on him in the middle of, I thought, I thought once he walked that fifth batter that they were just going to, they were just going to pull him at that point. So something's definitely a little more exaggerated with, with the control this year. I like, I don't like, obviously I don't want to speculate or anything like that, but obviously that does add to like the, the anxiety with it, especially when you start talking like forearm stuff like that. And obviously he's, he's, you know, you start talking about like, you know, schemes and up in the majors and, you know, he'll graduate soon. So you start talking about the guys who could be like your, your top prospect once all that happens. And he's probably at the top of the top of the list there. So you're going to, you're going to want to be as cautious with him as possible. So he walks a lot. He feels something in his arm. Okay. Well you're done and you're going to, you're going to sit and chill a bit. So. Yeah. When I said, okay. I mean, first off there was the, the start on, on the 17th. So that would have been what Thursday, mm-hmm. his second start in five outings where he fails to get out of the first inning. Like you mentioned the walks. Um, he didn't, he didn't give up any hits, but he, mm-hmm. he walked five batters in that first inning. Didn't complete it. And then, and then yes, yeah, Sunday, the report out that he's going to he's going to sit a little bit with uh with forearm tightness and forearm tight i'm they said not speculating but you know when when pitchers when pitchers require tommy john it usually starts with forearm tightness now especially let's pitcher, hope, pirates pitcher <laughs> let's hope it doesn't come to that and it really is just forearm tightness and mm-hmm. some rest uh will will We'll cure it and he'll be back to, to normal. But but yeah, Bubba Chandler, who I hadn't really thought of it that way, but but yeah, once um I mean Paul Skeens is gonna be graduating here after after a few more outings. Bubba Chandler probably s- slots into that number one prospect for the Pittsburgh Pirates. So focus a lot of focus is on him and you wanna you wanna make sure that he's healthy for sure. Yeah, yeah. I remember they did something similar with uh with Contreras back in 2021 when he was in double a, he had like the, the forearm tightness and he, they shut him down for a couple months and he was still able to come back and, and pitch. And like, he made still made his debut that year and stuff like that. So when, when you get arms like this, you know, you gotta be like, we see, we've seen with the Marlins, like things can go bad pretty, pretty quickly with, with that. So like, if you have an opportunity to rest him and, and put in a break and, and just make sure everything's fine, then, just do it, especially with an arm like like Chandler and stuff like that. So yeah, and and then also, I mean, we can talk about a success story here. You mentioned Contreras uh, when it comes to that, but uh, I mean, Thomas Harrington was shut down during spring training, and that was mm-hmm. with shoulder. That was that was his shoulder. So, mm-hmm. um, which also normally isn't a great sign, but but yeah. So it's sometimes rest is the cure here. Is yeah. kind of what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. hopefully that's the case here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. It was a good week though this week. I feel like it was. It was. It was. It was, it was tough to come out with just two. There's. There's a lot of good. Even. Even. There's some more hitters and stuff like that. That. So it was actually a, a fairly good week, like hitting wise, on there. Which I know that's that's the big thing in the system right now, trying to find someone to right. hit. You know, you guys talking about like Telez getting like. Like time to move on from Telez. Like Matt Gorski had a pretty good week last week, and he's a guy that can play first and stuff like that. If you if you didn't want to go the Jake Lamb route and, or, or something like that, Gorski's had a pretty good week last week. Um, so and like he can do that and play really good 
center field too. So true. Yeah, good. Well, like you said, a big week. A lot of guys talk about. So if you want to hear more, right, you can go over and check out Anthony Murphy. Bucks on deck and you guys have the podcast as well talk more so check them out to hear the rest but yeah really appreciate uh the insight here today no problem no problem all right thanks murphy happy to get my day started super early that's always fun they're welcome (laughs) (laughs) now we appreciate you have uh have a good one and yeah if you haven't subscribed to the bucks on deck Substack, make sure you do that it's it's great stuff you can get stuff just delivered right to your email every single day. Uh, if you're if you're interested in the entire organization, top to bottom, uh, you, you do you cover everything from from the the, the Dominican uh, all the way up to to the major. So uh, check it out. Check it out if you haven't. Yeah.